A couple of years ago, my husband and I took a trip to Ireland, the home of many of our ancestors. It was a wonderful trip. We enjoyed the beautiful scenery. Everything was so lush and green. We ate delicious food. We met kind and generous people. We heard fascinating history. We spent several days in Dublin and our hotel was within walking distance of St. Patrick's Cathedral. So every morning we walked down to the cathedral for matins and often late in the afternoon we returned for evensong. There's just nothing like hearing pure voices singing beautiful music in a gorgeous setting. It was simply glorious. Now St. Patrick's Cathedral is a very interesting place and it was there that we encountered some history and a story and a door. This is the story behind the door and the story that was written on a placard that was displayed next to the door in the north transept of St. Patrick's Cathedral. It's a story about something that happened in 1492, a story about a family feud. Family feuds, of course, you know, have been around forever, long before it was the topic of a popular game show. There are famous feuds, the Montagues and the Capulets, the Sharks and the Jets, the McDonald's and the Campbells, the Hatfields and the McCoys. But this feud was between the Fitzgeralds and the Butlers, two prominent families in that day and in that time. One of the things that they feuded about was who was to be assigned the position of Lord Deputy, a position of great prominence and power. And so in 1492, when that position was given to one of the Fitzgeralds, it's safe to say that the butlers were more than disappointed. And so the feud that had been simmering beneath the surface for a long, long time began to erupt. There were arguments, there were conflicts, there were armed skirmishes that often happened just outside the city walls. And one of those skirmishes, the butlers realized that they were definitely outnumbered. And so they fled, and they fled into St. Patrick's Cathedral, where they ran into the chapter house and barricaded themselves behind a heavy door. The Fitzgeralds followed them into the cathedral, they realized that the butlers were relying on the law of sanctuary, but they were determined to continue their conflict. So they demanded that the butlers open the door and come out. The butlers, of course, refused. It would be very dangerous. And so the argument continued through the door. And finally, finally, Gerald Fitzgerald told the butlers that if they would open the door and emerge, that he would guarantee that none of them would be hurt. Of course, the butlers didn't believe that, not for a second. But wishing to show his sincerity, Fitzgerald had one of his men take a hatchet and cut a hole through the center of the door. And then Fitzgerald thrust his arm through the hole in the door. Well, the butlers looked at that arm. They looked at each other. They recognized, of course, that it would be a simple thing for one of them to simply take a sword and hack off the arm of their enemy. Should they do it? They looked again at the arm, again at each other. And finally, James, one of the leaders of the butlers, he extended his own hand and grasped the hand of Fitzgerald in a gesture of peace and reconciliation. The door was open, the butlers came out, and that was the end of the feud, at least for a while. Well, now that was centuries ago, and the chapter house is long gone. The only thing that remains of it is this old door and the story that goes with it, the door of reconciliation. That's the only physical artifact it's displayed there in the north transept of St. Patrick's Cathedral. But there is one other artifact that references that time and that story. And that is the phrase that is often used in Ireland and sometimes beyond. The phrase is chancing an arm. And what that means is that someone takes a risk that could end up in disaster in the hopes of a positive outcome. 
I have thought about that door and that story and that phrase many times. And I think that in times of trouble and struggle and strife, it would be a good thing for all of us to consider chancing an arm in the name of reconciliation and peace.